Previously on agentpalmer.com, Dragon's Milk offers a cup of life lessons. The Beatles Get Back isn't 100% for everyone. And as someone who's held onto two jobs for at least six years, I'm still in awe of Matt's longevity. This is The Palmer Files, episode 61, with Chris, Bill, Amy, Becca, Lauren, Ilana, Ethan, Corey, and my mom, discussing the future, the past, and a few things in between. Are you ready? Let's do the show! And welcome to the Palmer Files. I'm your host, Jason Sturzik, also known as Agent Palmer. And on this 61st episode are Chris, Bill, Amy, Becca, Lauren, Ilana, Ethan, Corey, and my mom. What you are about to hear is One Final Question, Volume 2, this time spanning episodes 26 to 50, which conveniently picks up where Volume 1 ended at 25. And as with Volume 1, you will not be hearing all 25 questions, just a select few. For some of you, you've heard all of these before because you listen to every episode all the way until it is completed. For others, you may have missed one or two of these either because you didn't listen to the episode or you didn't get the opportunity to listen to the end. No matter the reason, I encourage you to enjoy a trip to my potential future and my definitive past. The criteria for selection remains my whim. Some questions were too reliant on having heard the entire episode prior to it. Those didn't make the cut. These selections should all stand on their own. Some may have been a bit redundant in question or answer. Some were similar in question, but my answer differed. And a couple of those made this episode because I found my own evolution over the course of the episodes interesting. Time in between episodes passing is not the same as time in between their releases. So the questions about my future, there are three of them here, range from being asked weeks to almost a year apart as far as the recordings go. Perhaps I'll know more of what to make of it on the other side. Perhaps I won't. In the meantime, you will hear these questions, some of which turn into little sub-discussions that are fun. Things like trying to remember what thing I wanted to do. What would I teach? What plays was I a part of behind the scenes in theater? What's it like being a lifelong fan of the Baltimore Orioles? And much, much more. Before we get going, remember that if you want to discuss the episode as you listen or afterwards, you can tweet me at Agent Palmer and this show at The Palmer Files. All of my guest Twitters and links to their respective episodes can be found in the show notes. Don't forget, you can see all of my writings and rantings on agentpalmer.com. And of course, email can be sent to thepalmerfiles at gmail.com. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, Chris, do you have one final question for me? I do. Uh, So you and I have uh, started blogs and podcasts and graphic design companies and website companies and and Twitch streams together. So in a perfect world where we actually got to make money off of a thing together, because let's be honest, we haven't figured that part out yet. um, (laughs) What what? would you like to do that you also don't think would destroy our friendship? Because sometimes working together with a person can really impact the way that you look at that person long-term. So what would you want to do in a perfect world and not even where money isn't an object, but we we've got to make money doing it. What would you want to do together, both as friends and as business partners? So first of all, I just want to say you and I, one of the things that endears us to each other is that we treat everything like it's professional. We didn't start the Twitch stream like, oh, maybe. And I didn't start the blog like, oh, maybe like, yeah, they were experiments, but we were going to treat them as professional endeavors because if you're going to do something, do it right. Um, For us, when you do things well. People won't be sure you've done anything at all, (laughs) which is actually very accurate because like I've spent hours editing or writing or drafting or 
you know, for some posts on some movie reviews, like watched a movie three times. Cause I'm like, where's my angle? Like, I like this movie, but where, how do I write about that? I'm not just going to be like, it's good. Mm-hmm. Anyway, all of that aside, right. I think it's, uh, and I'm going to think of the biggest, uh, most pop culture thing I can think of. It's nerdist, right. And whether it's under the, Palmer brand, which I, th- I think is probably the way I would go. Mm-hmm. Um, but it would just be like, all right, here's agent Palmer, which would be as synonymous as here's nerdist. And what is nerdist? It's, it's a blog. It started, it's a podcast. It's video content. It's all of the things we're doing under one umbrella. I hesitate to say media corporation, but nerdist did collaborate on I mean, other fits. things it fits with everything we so built to this point that's right? basically what i want to build is an um you know an umbrella corporation where we can utilize the writing the audio the video the design i want to use everything because i don't want to say like you and i'll do a blog because not that we'll get sick of it but like we want to do other things like it that would be like taking a caged animal and keeping him caged. It's like, no, yeah. here's a, here's the world run. Yeah, so go it's check like, it out. all right, here's what we do. And that's what, th- I mean, the one thing is just basically bringing it all together under one umbrella where we do everything. That's, that's what I want to do. All right. So we'll figure it out. <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> we'll just, we'll just keep going. Yeah, we just keep keep doing what we do. I feel like we've been working on that for 18 years. I, I don't think it's going to take us another 18. But um, yeah, I know you're going to call me tomorrow and be like, hey, I got an idea. <laughs> and as long as I can, I will always pick up. <laughs> so let's let's go. Let's get this. All right, Bill, do you have one final question for me? Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, <laughs> where do you see yourself for the next five years? The classic interview question, job interview, really. But... Well, see, here's the thing. Uh, as we record this, I'm unemployed. So if this was an em- like an actual interview, I'd be like, here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'll, it's, um, it's not an interview interview, you know, we'll allow for some creative dreaming, but I think you know? I look, I, th- I think as long as I, I would love to say that, um, outside of bills being paid, which is like a given, like, you know, I'd hopefully that'll happen. Um, I, I think I'd like to still have a passion for something, right? Like I know the blog is, you know, going to be approaching like eight, nine or 10 years soon. Mm. Um, and I don't pay attention to that as much as maybe other people would. It's just, Hey, it's Thursday. Here's the next post, you know? Right. And, um, the podcast is every two weeks. And so far I'm still kind of just like, Hey, this is great. I think in five years, I'd like to be passionate about something. If it's still the blog and the podcast, fantastic. I don't have to do anything else, but if it, you know, but it's going to have to be something. I don't know if I can exist without Without these, these kinds of side things. It's I, I, well, I don't, these out, these side outlets, the outlets. Yes. You know what I mean? They're, they're, you know, creative endeavors to a degree, but they are, you know, um, you know, it's not your job. It's not what's got, paying your bills you know you're talking about having a nine to five job and these things in addition yep. to them yep I, I although i mean i do wonder if if somebody gave me a nine to five to create a podcast right um and and to you know to i've never had a nine to five that fulfilled the creative itch right so mm. it's possible you know the shine comes off of the palmer files because i can because I've got money to spend, right? Like, mm-hmm. I mean, it would be, you know, if you came to me tomorrow because you hit the lottery and we're going to, we're going to revamp wicked theory, but we're going to have money to spend on it. That might fulfill that creative itch. 
and even in a more substantial way, because like there are plenty of things I would love to do with this show or the blog that I just can't because I'm, I'm working within the environment, you know, I'm working with constraints. Um, yeah. and it's not, look, we, we are in a pandemic, but I have constraints that are regardless of that. Right. Like well, sure. I do have anxieties, but I'm also like, you know, even when I had a nine to five, it's not like I could throw money away. So it's like, all right, I'm, I'm going to be selective. Like it's, I don't miss on books that I review because I spend a lot of time making sure that the 20 bucks I spend on a book is like well spent and it's right. not penny pinching. It's like, well, if you make five mistakes, that's a hundred bucks. That's not unsubstantial. So it's those kind of things where I think I'd be more willing to take a flyer on like a book I may not like or right. a movie I may not like and, and like spend money on them if I could. So there are aspects of that that are missed out, but I think I just, as long as I have the output and I'm, you know, I don't look at numbers anymore. Really, the only reason I look at numbers is, is the feed still active? Like as long as I get one tick in a week, <laughs> then I know the everything still works, right? right? right like, right, right. okay. It's um, got a heartbeat. We, we, we're good. Yes. I Because I've actually, in the early days of the blog, there were occasions when it would the server would go down or a mm. code would break and it would be like, I've had no traffic for four days. Okay, I got to check on the site. And it'd be like, all right, all right. So that's why I look for the heartbeat. But I don't actually know what the right. numbers are anymore. And I've been, you know, comfortable where, um, and I know it's the same for you. As long as I'm fulfilled when I hit publish. Right. I don't yeah. need people to be like, yeah, that was great. I mean, look, you're one of the, you're one of those people. I'm like, Hey, did you listen to the episode? Did you like it? Like, what did you right. think? But I'm genuinely asking for your feedback, not your affirmation. Yes. And I think sure. that that's one of those, it ties into the friendship aspect of it. Like I know I can count on you to be like, didn't sound right. Or, you know, Hey, you, you fucked up. Like I No, Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, sometimes you take those notes. Sometimes you don't, you know, uh, there's been a couple I offered you for this that, uh, you've chosen not to, uh, you know, follow through with. It's fine. No, it's fine. No, it's fine. Well, it's, I deserve that. What we learned in this episode is that I would deserve that for all the ideas <laughs> that you've given me that I've rebuffed, you know? So, and by the way, yes, you should be nervous if in case I ever do win a lottery because things will get turned upside down. All right, Amy, do you have one final question for me? I do. Um, so I, I, I think about this a lot with my stuff that, you know, you know, when you're growing up and you love stuff and your parents are like, it's just a phase. And then when you're a grown up and you get to do it on your own time and with your own money, you're like, I still really love this thing from my childhood for whatever reason. Do you have a thing from your childhood, however goofy or weird or obscure it was, that you're like, it's it was not a phase, I came back to it, and I'm more kind of just love leaning into this now as an adult? Yeah, this is going to sound uh, absolutely weird. Um, I, I treat the Palmer brand, right? The AgentPalmer.com is the blog and the po Palmer Files as a podcast. I mm -hmm. treat this like a job. And I treat it yeah. seriously. Yeah. And to me, even when it was not my full-time gig, and it's not because I make no money at it, but it's all I've got to do right now. It reminds me that when I was five and six, I used to borrow, I guess, and take the hand-me-down like briefcase that my father had and pretend to go to work. Like I was the kid that was like, I, now granted, We've established I'm an only child, so yeah. like I wasn't like I only didn't. Only children definitely come up with their own weird little games. So so it was like <laughs> I'm going to pretend to go to work, and that's I pretended to go to work, and now I'm not pretending, and I have right. these processes that I've kind of created for myself, um, and I, you know I'm I'm quote unquote, pretending to go to work. Cause this doesn't, you know, this still doesn't feel like work, but I treat it seriously. Yeah. So that way when somebody's like, well, you've been out of work for a year, what have you been doing? You'd be like, well, actually, 
Um, I've yeah. been editing audio and recording and scheduling and promoting and writing and yeah. editing and, but, and, I I mean it it comes up a lot on this show. Um, do I don't know if this is what I want to do for like real, real, real. Um, yeah. But absolutely, as a passion project, like I look <laughs> back at borrowing my father's old hand-me-down briefcase and be like in and i didn't tell anyone right like it's just like in my head i'm like i'm going yeah. to work now and you walk yeah. out and you go into the other room and you open your briefcase and you take out whatever pad and then you do whatever and now yeah. i just i have my own office where i can kind of play work except when i'm playing work i actually have published things that i can throw yeah. out on the internet Th- that's kind nice. of the thing i think for me Nice. I like that. That's a really good one. That's really good. I like that story. Nice. I mean, luckily, I was an only child, so I don't have like a sibling who's like, remember that time when you used to pretend right. to go to work? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it's it's nice. It's nice that you can uh, control the narrative of the potentially slightly embarrassing story from your childhood. A hundred percent. All right, Becca, do you have one final question for me? Yeah. So I was talking before about how I've made it a point in my own life to journal every day, and I'm just making myself do it, kind of forcing a habit for myself. Is there a habit you wish you had that you don't have, but you wish you did? Ooh. Um, I'm, I'm, tr- I'm trying to think. I habits or I I might take journaling I might say writing on a daily basis I I I um I've been doing a long and I think I just wrote about I I just wrote about this I think it will be out by the before this show airs mm-hmm. I have been doing a long slow purge of just junk in my house by getting rid of five items every day or putting them away, whatever. It's mm. my own little system. But like that's become a habit because I've been doing it for two years now. Um, so that's kind of helped declutter the the, the house. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think, it, you know what, it, it's not really a habit. I just like to get better at my ma- time management. Like I'm... Mm. Like I will read for longer than I should and stay up a little bit later. Yeah. Or I will, I don't know, play a video game for longer than I should. Like I, I, my time management is, I I mean, I get a lot of stuff done, Mm -hmm. but I could get so much more done. Yeah. (laughs) And and, and I, I feel like it's probably just, I don't know what the habit is to get into. I just know my bad habit is my time management. Yeah. So if I could no, make that a either. good habit, I feel like that would be the optimal because I would be yeah. like, like, uh, well, imagine what else I could do. Right. Exactly. Um, I don't know what else that is. <laughs> yeah. But it's there somewhere. Um, because the the other thing is, uh, over the last two years, um, I've made it a point to get into the habit of playing guitar on a more regular basis mm-hmm. which for me is like three times a week like that's a more regular basis yeah um i don't that's need to get prof- yeah. i don't need to get proficient i don't need to play live i don't need to go to open mics i just i just need to know that if i pick up the guitar i can play <laughs> yeah <laughs> no that's all right that's so i don't, I don't put <laughs> i don't know i don't know if that answers your question about habits though I think it does. Okay. Okay, Lauren, do you have one final question for me? So, uh, Sir Palmer, right? (laughs) Can I call you that? Um, I actually have two, I have two questions for you. Okay. Is that, is that allowed? No, I'll I'll give it to you. Okay. I'll give you, yeah. So my first question is like, we were talking a little bit about teaching and education and what, like, if I told you you had to teach something, 
what would it be? And, and how would you, well, this is all one question. What would it be? And like, how would you, how would you gift the world with this one thing? Uh, um, okay. So I, <laughs> all right. I, 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 I have a, one side of my family is teachers. Mm-hmm. Um, my grandmother was a teacher. My mother ended up doing some teaching aside from her consulting. My father's actually done some teaching. My aunt's done teaching. Like my uncle, like everybody on that side of the family is basically like a teacher. And I, I will tell you before I get to the topic, it will not be anything less than high school. Cause I, I just don't think I have the patience. Uh-huh. Um, but I, I feel like, it would probably be writing in some capacity. I don't uh-huh. know if I have the, I don't know what the word is, maybe discipline for it to be journalism. Mm-hmm. Um, but maybe just like writing, uh, like a, as yeah. a, at like a, you know, high school or like a junior college, because I, one of the things I don't get a chance to do often is edit for people. Um, mm-hmm. And most of the time I'm editing for friends and people I know. So it's not really a challenge, but it is like, mm-hmm. okay, I, I see what you're getting at. How can I make it better <laughs> so that you sound better? Right. Um, so I feel like it would probably be that. Um, yeah. But at the same time, I absolutely love marketing. Like there, yeah. there are just pieces of it that I enjoy. So I could also teach marketing. Yeah. Which I guess kind of go hand in hand. Um, I mean, copy, like writing copy for stuff is marketing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Although yeah. I've never been good. I mean, I, 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 I know uh, former bosses that have asked me to write copy and they're like, you you, you, what are you telling a story? Just get the get get it I mean, across. It's like yeah. Well, I and and I know that some of them have come around and 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 times have changed because you know the uh what, what a decade ago content was king right like that was the mm-hmm. that was the word around the internet it was just content is king and I I think that's still the case mm-hmm. I I think now more than ever it's about story. So yeah, it's the storytelling. Yep. It And it doesn't have to be written. I mean, this is where audio right. and even video, probably video more than anything is taken off. Right. Like, I mean, look at the average YouTube channel or like Twitch streamer and the ones who tell stories are the ones that are making the money. Yeah. It's not yeah. just because like I'm good at a video game like that's no, it's these people are personalities that tell stories. And the same goes for podcasting, like just storytelling. Right. So. I guess it all kind of coalesces. Maybe if there was a class on content creation, like that would be my jam. But I, I feel oh, like cool. that's such that I, I that's super niche. Like maybe like an auxiliary community college would be like, yeah, like a one credit like <laughs> content creation course. We'll let that guy teach it. He seems to have his stuff together. Like, <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. So so I yeah that that I guess that's awesome. That's very cool. Well, I have another question. Okay. That wasn't my two questions. It was kind of like a combined question. All right. Okay. So um, I can letter you one quote up to like, I don't know, like seven, like 10 words. What would that quote be? You had to make the quote like art. Um, that's, uh, that's a hard one. It's a, it's a hard one because, um, and I've covered this before, but mm-hmm. just wait. Someone has asked you this. No, 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 no. No. I what I what I was gonna say was I I I I make meticulous notes when I read books. Um, yeah. You know, and I, I as I've said, but what I have said before is I don't crack the spine. I don't highlight. I don't write in my books. Like I, I make a digital oh, note and then I go don't, back and I, me a book then. Okay. I, I'm terrible with books. I'll, I'll make sure if I ever loan you, I'll give you the book. That's, okay. So I, so I yeah, won't get yeah. it back and I won't, but like, so, <laughs> but I have digital, I, I would be, I, I don't know if I like, all I keep thinking is like, I have a, a, a Google doc full of nothing but notes I've taken from books. Right. Yeah. 
and I'm sure somewhere in there is something, but none of them are succinct. Like most of those things are like sentences or two sentences or paragraphs, right? Like I think for like personally, like taking what other people say out, like it would almost be like, don't be afraid to fail. Like, and I hear that from other people, but I think it's a thing that I've started to take to heart more than anything. Like, um, so I, I guess it would be don't be afraid to fail. Like That's I, awesome. I, 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 I can't think of anything else other than other than um, I have. Yeah, this... I was thinking you'd go with like a movie quote or something. See, and you know what? I, <laughs> I, I was thinking about it, but like the only the only other thing I've got is um, a post-it note that a friend wrote for me oh, um, in the so early hard. days of um, Agent Palmer uh-huh. when no one knew much about me at all. And then I started like talking in uh, on Twitter and like really like becoming a part of podcast communities and stuff. He just, he just, he just wrote agent Palmer nerd IRL hero online. And I was like, well, that's so, so I mean, if, if it wasn't going to be failure is okay. Right. Like then, then it would probably be like, nerd irl hero online because i Mm. i like to think that while i am the same person i am i appear much more confident on the internet (laughs) (laughs) i love it well those words have meaning to you right and that's like what i love about like crafting these like artwork pieces or like making something drawing the words to because they have meaning behind them right and they make them extra special so i think that's cool all right alana do you have one final question for me can you remember whether it's from middle school or high school any of the plays or musicals that you were crew on Okay, so I, okay, I high school, I remember we did. You know, you look like you're in high school right now, just remembering. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm like, I'm panicking. Just suddenly, you look 14. <laughs> okay, go uh, ahead. Uh, high school, I believe we did, high school, I did Shenandoah one year. Um, because specifically, um, and and you know this was the the 90s so we had just discovered the idea of a laptop portable computer so there's a there's a scene where they're in a tent and we just had fun playing random sound effects that we found from the early internet during rehearsals obviously not but yeah. um in college i did um the crucible and those are the, I I know I did others. I like I know there were others. Those are the only two I those can are the remember. Memorable ones. That's okay. Those are both. Those are both um, very popular shows. I I'll, I'll say this. I remember the. I, I I don't remember much of the Crucible except how it ends. I like I remember more weight. Right. Like I that I remember. And Shenandoah, I've tried to block out of my mind because I remember for months after the cast party, I still had the songs in my head, right. which that- is the, it's why I always preferred plays to musicals because plays, like maybe you remember a line, right. musicals, those are in your head. That is why you have to do a lot of musicals so that as soon as one is over, you can move on to the next one. So that's so because I only that's did like three, scene. that's why I would. That's all you got. That's all you got. But those are good ones. And I loved seeing your brain working so hard to go back there. I, I know somewhere in my house and I've been trying to like purge items and like clean and not go minimalist, but just get rid of stuff somewhere not Marie I, Kondo it no no I couldn't go that far but okay. I know somewhere and I didn't throw it away but somewhere I have a thank you letter from a director from it might be Shenandoah I don't remember um I'd have to look at the year and like correspond it with yearbooks but I do yeah. know I did see over the course of like going through stuff a thank you letter from 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 way back when it's a very gracious business I still remember a lot of thank yous. I still remember everybody. Like I'm not, I may not be in touch with them, 
but I still remember it. It. it I will say this: it, it's a brotherhood and a yeah. sisterhood. It's a family. Yeah. Whether you've yeah. done, whether you've just been behind or on, like I, I, it, it's, it's in that way. It's just like sports, where like there's a common language. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I know. I miss it. I can't wait to get back to it when, uh, when we're, you know, we're back in theaters and and public spaces in that way. Ethan, do you have one final question for me? Well, actually, this is this does follow up on one of the things we were saying earlier. I mean, you were you were mulling over what what you could do, you know, if you could either have the perfect job or maybe you you have in a fantasy world sort of um, unlimited resources and money's not an issue. Uh, what would be your your dream, you know, going forward five years from now or ten years from now? Would you want to be uh, uh, syndicated? talk show host or a, a, a podcast, you know, creator host who has, you know, millions of listeners and could make your living that way? Or is there some other creative pursuit? You mentioned creatives. Is there some other creative pursuit that you, you would, you could do if you, if you just, you know, without any connection to reality, like if it just could happen. So I, I, I know I would continue the podcast and the blog because I enjoy the writing and I enjoy the recording and I enjoy the editing and I even don't mind, you know, like, like I just reached out to you. Like I, I had, you know, um, I, I, I'm, I'm not afraid of that. In fact, that's a, like a thing I've gotten over, like, Oh, like nobody's going to want to do my show, but you got to ask like, otherwise, you know, I, I, I don't want to be syndicated. I almost feel like I only want to be successful enough and and I, I know it sounds like slightly counterintuitive. Uh, I would be happy to cap my listenership at like 50,000, 100,000 and not a million. Um, I would rather a small dedicated fan base. But the only thing uh, that I would do differently than what I'm doing now is I would get an assistant or some fans or someone to point out smaller podcasts or smaller bloggers that I could then guest on because the one thing that drives me nuts about both blogging and podcasting is that there's not necessarily gatekeepers, right? Um, but someone like me who does it because I enjoy it, getting the eye of, or the ear of, or the, you know, whatever of, the next rung up the ladder of people who get, you know, more downloads than me or are moderately successful as opposed to like, you know, your Mark Marins or Kevin Smith's, right? Like the people in between us <laughs> that are closer to me um, are always so looking forward or doing their own thing. They don't look back down to where they were. Mm. And I just want to make sure that and maybe this is why I said you had the perfect job for me. Like I, I don't necessarily want to teach, but if I can take my moderately successful podcast of 75,000, you know, for my audience and go back down to somebody who gets like 50 downloads and be on their show and bring my audience that I want to do that because mm. it's the one thing that I cannot find people doing for me. So I go, there's a void. I want to do that for other people. And I would need, you know, an assistant or I need my listeners to be like, hey, there's this other show I really like that's really small. Would you do it? Like, yeah, uh, yeah, like I would. But I just, I'm trying to find, like, I'm trying to jump up right now. Um, and I just know that, you know, I keep, I've, I've written it down several times so I don't forget. But like when I, whenever I get there, whenever I get to whatever level that happens to be for me, I just want to turn it around and help the people behind me. Cause it always seems like everybody wants to go, go like, I, Oh, oh you know, like I, if I'm, you know, I start a podcast or I start a blog, you know, if I can't sell it, <laughs> if I can't, you know, get to millions of downloads, I'm out. Right. And there's people that just do it passionately that are of moderate success or that are of no success at all. You know, they've got their core 10 listeners. I, I want to help them. 
I, I just want to give them a platform, whether it's guesting on my show or having me on theirs. Like I, I just, I want to turn around and help those people. And I, I, that's, it's the one thing I would do differently. Otherwise I would just keep writing and reading and talking to people, I guess. <laughs> Which is not a bad, not a bad way to live. I mean, that's, what's wonderful about both what you do and I, what I do, I feel like is you get to interact with people we wouldn't normally interact with on a daily basis or for me in the course of teaching, you know, just get to get some random people in the room together in your case, reach out to someone, have them on your show and just have conversations. Uh, So important, you know, especially now I, I, everyone's locked at home, you know, it's so weird, but I feel like conversations are just hard. Like it's a die. I, I know it's over said like conversations are a dying art, but I feel like they are. Uh, because there are, there are like three types of people that I've found. There's the people that are okay with the awkward silence because, you know, they're thinking of something better to say, or they're just thinking there's the people that have to fill the silence. And then there's the people that just couldn't be bothered. Right. Why, why would I talk to that guy? Like what? Right. Like, and, and I, no, I mean, you should be comfortable with an awkward silence every once in a while. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. And you should be able to talk to anybody. And, you know, that's that's just the way it works. I, I still get nervous. I had my friends on this show and got nervous when they were on. So as long as I have those nerves, I'm cool. Like, I feel right. like that, that, that reminds me like, oh, this still matters. Okay. Right. Good well, there's you. an art to it. As you said, there's an art and, you know, people aren't certainly sitting down for an hour or an hour and a half as we have. It's not something people really have the training or time to do. And I don't know if it's going to be a generational thing or whether it's our perpetual, uh, the way in which technology has made a, made it so much easier to become distracted and to sort of make it acceptable not to be fully tuned in to someone else it's so easy to as you said during that awkward silence it's just like well i better check my phone then you know just in that in that five second interval it's like well you know i'm not engaging you so now i can go do something else it's really hard to resist that yeah uh, uh, because because of these stupid devices that we we all have in our back pockets so All right, Corey, do you have one final question for me? I do. And I'm admittedly asking as a Red Sox fan, but how how does it feel to be one of the noble, the faithful few who are holding on in the world of Orioles fandom? So full disclosure, as we've been recording, there's the game is on to my right Uh, for the last two years i've been i've been paying for mlb tv because i don't live in the baltimore area so it's out of market for me so i i've been i've I've been paying for it for years and years and years and years and when i lost my job i went i i it's an expense but i feel obligated to to make more of an effort to use it and i can't give it up so i have watched 95 percent of every inning of every Orioles game for the last three years. Now the now last that year, incredible. last year it was only a 60 game season. It was super easy. Course, and it was, and it it was, was even easier, easier because the way that schedule worked out, they were all seven o'clock games. Like I didn't have to stay right. up to watch the Seattle game that starts at 10. Right. They didn't go to the West coast. Yeah. Um, and you know, I have it on, right? Like I'm not just watching it. Like I'll read a book while I'm watching Like kind of like we talked about in the episode. Right. Uh, what I will tell you is, my fandom has always remained. I got my love of Tolkien from my father. That's how I got my love of the Orioles, right? It's just, That's it's it. just, it, it's, it. it's how it happens. And I've, I've written about my love of the Orioles. It was one of the few creative things I was able to do in college that like just kind of poured out. It's not hard to do that. And I, I, it's hard to, when you talk about being one of the noble few, it is hard. Cause even within my family that are nothing but Orioles fans, <laughs> I'm the only one watching 
all of the games, right? Like, <laughs> right. Um, right. Jo- John Means pitched a no hitter, and I feel like I was in a group family text in the ninth inning. But I watched from the first pitch and was right. just like, right. I can't tell anybody about this because I don't want to <laughs> jinx it. Like, oh, yes, um, yes. It's it's been hard. I, I'll, I I'm not gonna lie because what y- y- you I you know I grew up. And in the mid nineties, we had Cal Ripken breaking the record That's right. and 97, they make the playoffs. They go to Yankee stadium and Jeffrey Meyer, Jeffrey Mayer yeah. catches yeah. that home Absolutely. run. That's not a home run. Yep. And ever since yep. then we've won the division once we, you know, yep. one of the, and I, I, I hate to say this to you, a Red Sox fan, but like one of the best things we did in the last 10 years was knock you out on the last day of the season because it was the closest right. thing we were ever oh. going to get to a playoff run. We are 2011. Like, that was so painful. It, that was awful. But we, and I was living in Maryland at that time. <laughs> but we just it's 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 painful. And yet and yet like and, and look. It's first world problems, right? I'm looking for a job, but I still have the ability to pay and watch every game and I'm making, and I can make the time, right? I I get, I get all of that. But one of the things I've learned is that fandom is without rationale. It, it, it doesn't exist. Why do you love Tolkien? Why do you love the Red Sox? Why does a star Wars fan love star Wars? I, I, it's just part of me. I, That's right. I, it's, That's it, right. I, I can't, I can't not now. Do I have a second and third? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, I, I sure. learned to love the, the NL West because we don't play there even with interleague very often. So I can enjoy right. all of the chaos for the last decade of the Dodgers, the Padres, the Giants, the D backs, the Rockies, right. all of that. Right. That's been fun. And that's always great entertainment to watch after mm-hmm. a heartbreaking loss three, two to, whoever you know whatever and, <laughs> right but right but we I, but i keep going back to the well and it gives mm-hmm. me hope because it's all i've got left and i'm looking for a job so i can't help but think like well they just keep losing and i keep getting rejections but one of these days it's going to turn around for them and one That's of these right. days it's going to turn right. around for me and i i i i mean not to kind of tweak it from the question you asked but it's one of the enduring things about sports. And there are people that grow up playing sports and then learn to love it or playing sports and then learn to hate it. And there are people that have no concept of sports at all. Uh, my partner has lived with me. I don't know. She's we, We've been together for five years. She moved in, I think, three and a half, four years ago. She was uh, a soccer fan, an mm-hmm. international soccer fan. I, I, I love the Orioles. I've turned her into, into a baseball fan. I watch the NBA playoffs. Now she does too. I watch college football. Mm-hmm. Now she does too. And she gets invested in these games and caught up in these games that she probably never would have watched had it not been for me. Right. And and, right. and and through her, I don't want to call it naive, naivete because it's not, but through her virgin eyes of like, I've never Absolutely. sat down and watched a, a baseball yeah. game all the way through and, and cared about the outcome. There's something right. like unique about that. And look, it comes and goes. I didn't always watch every game, but right. you know, I, I just keep holding out hope. And for those out there who are like, well, if you stop watching, maybe they'll win. That's not true <laughs> fandom. True fandom is That's I want right. to be there. I no want to see it when it happens. Absolutely. I don't want it to happen Absolutely. without me. Yeah. Yeah. And my wife is a Cubs fan. I grew up a Cubs fan. And so, you know, it happened for her. I'm sure it'll happen for you. I you know, I am. And, and I will tell you, the Orioles are the only other team in our division that I will cheer for because like the day when the day comes that the Orioles are really good and they go to the world's, I will be cheering for the Orioles so hard. It's not even funny. Yeah. And, and look, it's not that hard. Like, I've rooted against the Yankees my entire life. I became a Red right. Sox fan in 03 and 04. In a, and exactly. I was just as heartbroken as you when that home run went out and Boone hit it. Oh, and absolutely. then I was just yeah. as happy for you watching those right. four wonderful days in 2004. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Yeah. No. And, 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 and the same will be true likewise, even though I know it's very likely that they will have to make their way to the world series, you know, over the bodies of the Red Sox when it happens, but when it does happen, uh, after that has passed, then I will be cheering for them absolutely all the rest of the way, uh, because it is it is a noble calling to be an Orioles fan. Um, and as you say, like sports fandom, it's it's like life, you know, I mean, like it's it's part of the it's just it's the narrative, right? The, the narrative of the like, whether it's the, the narrative of a game or the narrative of a whole season or the narrative of a whole generation of seasons, right? It's it's watching how that story unfolds. And it's just uh, it is delightful. I agree. Yeah. We'll keep it up, man. Thanks. Keep it up. All right, Ma. Do you have one final question for me? Yes, I do. And I've been waiting for this. Oh, God. On your other podcasts, I've heard you talk about your father and me. And on a recent one, or maybe it was your collection, you mentioned... Um, mentioned recently that dad had an influence on you in terms of reading. That was the Tolkien. Yep. And also the influence on making sure you, st- you stayed at the end of a movie to watch the, cr- to watch. What no, happens I gave after you the credit cr- for that. But that was both of us. Okay. Yeah. But what I want to know is what else do you credit me for? Well, I mean, you were the Beatles, right? I don't, I mean, I, I, I always pick the stones, but like you were the Beatles influence and musically you, you know, there, there were other things, right? The Beach Boys was mainly you, uh, the Love and Spoonful, John Sebastian, you know, the, 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 the musically, um, I don't know who cooking comes from. I feel like that might have skipped a generation. Like I know I cooked a little with dad, but I feel like I, I, I osmosis got the cooking stuff more. Cause I'm not a baker and, and you enjoy baking. Um, I mean, I, I do, I have to credit you with a slight inspiration at the very least for starting my own business. I mean, it was a confluence of a lot of things. Um, Chris, I had helped him with his business and he had just folded and I was like, well, but this was fun. Um, so, uh, let's just keep doing this under a different name. Um, but you know, you were an inspiration there. I, I don't, I, I, I don't, I mean, music's a big one. I will grant you, but, um, I, I, I don't know. I was, I, I was just curious and it's look, they're, and, and the they're, thing they're, is, they're there. I'm sure they're there, but they're just not as overtly obvious. That's, is that because you worked with dad for, for so long? I don't know if it's because I worked with him or it's because I, you know, you identify with him. I I'm, I'm yeah. No, I was, I was just curious and you do credit me with your internal marketing and respect for communication. And the, you know, the, you know, only only one only one person in this family's published a book. Two books. The first two parts of the trilogy. No, nope, that's it. You 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 and your father, when I wrote the first book, you said, When are you gonna write the second? And I was ready ready to shoot you to the moon. And then you wrote the second. I did write the second. And what did we say? When's the third coming out? And I said, That's it. But, you know, you talk about music, and I remember one of my triumphs with you was when we were going somewhere when you were little. I could we, I could do John and Paul. Listening to the Beatles, and I'd say to you, who's the solo on this? And you could tell the difference between John and Paul. And you had to be like four or five. It was great. I don't know if I it still was can. Triumph. I might be able to. Oh, I'm sure you could. You could tell George. Yeah. John, Paul, and George. Okay. Yeah. That, that was my triumph. You've had others. Triumph. I mean, I'm still alive. Yes. You know, that was a, that couldn't have been a solo effort. That was a joint effort. <laughs> well, especially after the driving um, classes. Yes. That <laughs> and other things. Yes, you are still alive. But we're, we're proud of you. You turned out to be a good person, Jason. I, I, I mean, I can only take some credit for that then. I mean, you get all the rest. Thank you. Well, it just. 
it's just in you know in your bubby and your your pop up and your granddad and grandmom they they get credit too your your father and i were very fortunate to grow up in very loving homes and fortunate that we could provide the same for you and hopefully you can do the same for your family someday i love you ma i love you too jason thank you There were a few patterns and recurring motifs from the clips I chose and from the full episodes of 26 through 50 from which I pulled these selected one final questions. And there are any number of takeaways or closing thoughts that I could say here. But the one that is everything to me right now is that I am on a path. And though I have stated countless times, I do not know where it is leading. I'm making progress and I'm going somewhere. That's important. As you have heard on this show and the ones that preceded it, I have been attempting to find my place in the world. We all struggle with that. Sometimes we get lucky and we know what we want to do and we go after it. I've spoken to some of these people on the show and there is a tinge of envy I have towards them. But also, one of the reasons that I'm okay with that envy is that not knowing something isn't always a bad thing. First, If you're willing to acknowledge what you don't know, you can actively go out and educate yourself to fill in that gap in knowledge. Second, if you don't know how something will end or where it will go, it can feel as rewarding making progress as it is getting to the end. This is why I write so many spoiler-free book reviews on agentpalmer.com. I want you to enjoy the twists and turns just as I did. But most importantly, heading somewhere though I know not where, means I'm making progress. I'm evolving. I'm learning. I'm adapting. And most important to me personally, I'm creating. Though I continue to acknowledge that I don't know where all of this leads, I can still tell you that I enjoy all of the processes. I enjoy writing the blogs and editing the audio. I enjoy pacing around not knowing how to start a draft of something, even if it can be frustrating at times. Because I know that when push comes to shove, I'll be creating something. And that's cool. For me, being creative isn't a habit. It's become a way of life. It's what I do. And maybe it's the same for you. And maybe it isn't. That's okay. Just so long as you're going somewhere. Just so long as you're making progress. Just so long as you're not stagnating. Do the things you want. Find your passions even if you're not quite sure what they are. And you don't have to rest on what that passion might be. I'm considering a little dabble into video at some point. But then again, that's just another canvas for my passion to create. But it's not as though I've rested. I could have stopped at the blog. I could have stopped at the podcast. And since I didn't stop there, I'll probably keep on. Where it leads isn't the point. What I create And how I evolve and learn and grow is the point. And for that, I thank you. I thank you for listening to my journey and my growth and my evolution. And if you need a little push, a little inspiration, just reach out. You know where to find me. Thanks for listening to The Palmer Files, Episode 61. As a reminder, all links are available in the show notes. And now for the official business. The Palmer Files releases every two weeks on Tuesdays. If you're still listening, I encourage you to join the discussion. You can tweet me at Agent Palmer and this show at The Palmer Files. All of my guest Twitters and links to their respective episodes can be found in the show notes. Email can be sent to the show at thepalmerfiles at gmail.com. And remember, your home for all things Agent Palmer is agentpalmer.com.
can't believe this is a thing I do now. And I, I plan my, my off weeks around it. This is a release week. It's time to record the intro and outro. This is not. I don't have to record this weekend. At least for the, 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 the intro, outro, behind the scenes stuff. It's kind of weird. Uh, I've, uh, especially because going back through for this particular episode and thinking about the first One Final Questions volume um, and everybody asking me, like, what does it feel like now that you've done it? What's it takes so along? And that question's kind of gone away now. But at the same time, I, I do look back and go, why did I fight it so hard? I know part of it was because I wasn't ready then. And that's a legitimate thing. But this is this has been special. Uh, and it's going to keep on. I know not when. I know there's a lot of things I don't know. Um, but I know I'm heading somewhere. And I know the blog and this podcast are coming with me. So, uh, yeah.